Mercedes have got the W14V on board and in this video we're going to look at some of the potential aero mechanisms that might be at play. I did a general overview video with Peter Windsor on this. However, in this video I specifically want to scribble and draw some lines so some vortex lines to show you actually what might be at play. So let's learn together. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shubh, your daily F1 aeronamicist. In this video, let's go over some of the updates that the W14B uh, has brought on itself in detail. So we'll go over what the white side pod philosophy actually does, just as an, a brief overview. Then we'll jump into the mid-wing wingtip, which is very heavily modified and I have some theories around that. Then we'll dive into the floor edge and how the floor edge is working and what it's actually doing. And then we'll end up or wrap this up with the vortex generators that Mercedes have been sneakily been able to fit onto this car and some other teams would not be able to let's say copy them because of the advantage that they have inherently manufactured with the W14B. So let's get into it then. Well first let us look at the white side pod philosophy and what it actually does. Um, the white side pod philosophy comes with this undercut that allows you to redistribute the air into two distinct parts. One that goes underneath the undercut and feeds along the G-line going all the way towards the mouse hole and the rear floor edge where it is useful to feed the diffuser and the floor and the flow over the top of the undercut which is used to manage cockpit losses and cooling losses. Um, and also works with other mechanisms such as some small uh, vortex that has been generated by the vortex generators on the cockpit and also a little bit of bulk circulation that is generated uh, by the side wall of the of the side pod itself and of some of the circulation in the in the far field which allows you to suppress the losses that are coming off the cooling vents and the cockpits and then the name of the game for the flow on the top is to try and position this losses. First, energize this losses a little bit by feeding high energy air from the free stream um, to these losses. So basically they're not as lossy as uh, they initially are. And then try and feed this losses in a place wherein they make uh, minimum damage um, because they will be there. It's just about where do you position them. So this philosophy allows you to also position your losses smartly and ideally between the beam wing and the rear wing so that it does not interact as much with all the main um, aero force generating components you know the second big advantage of the undercut as you can see here is this pressurization so this pressurization is a consistent mechanism across all different conditions of the car that is your roll ride height and i say consistent very consistently because that is where i believe this concept really hits home because the output that it gives you is consistent across a large range of conditions, right? And what is this output? It allows you to drive a lot of outwash on the floor edge, uh, which is really useful for front floor extraction, which allows you to push your front floor much harder, uh, which in turn allows you to have stronger <clears throat> straight vortices, um, which further then allow you to generate more load. And the second thing it does is it gives you a clean way of managing the front wheel wake. So it allows you to ensure that the front wheel wake is pushed away from the body and all the wake that is the low energy air coming from behind the tire is not sucked in anywhere around the floor edge or even to the rear end of the car where you have your aero force generating components. So because of these two reasons, this concept I believe is quite uh, powerful and is basically picked up by everybody else on the grid. So next up, let's talk about the mid wing and this is where I think the updates really come to show you new mechanisms that are at play. So let's jump into the mid wing wing tip. So what do I think is happening here? Well, apart from it being a design compromise, I think to leave the cyst tube uh, the way it is, uh, Mercedes I have uniquely positioned themselves to use a couple of mechanisms which only they could use because uh, of their initial chassis design, right? So let us look at the W14 initial mid wing. So it was a downwashing wing which would generate a vortex about its wing tip as shown in this image here. And this vortex had its limitations because of the shape of 
the cyst tube wing it wasn't the most aerodynamically designed shape uh, simply because there's a cyst tube that you need to fit inside it so it has its own design constraints not because they don't want to make it aerodynamic however this vortex structure was extremely pivotal in ensuring that their aero mechanisms would work right and as we've shown in the video covering in detail how the w14 initially worked but their upgrade package now has this cyst tube wing as we can see and it has this cascaded winglet and i think something really really interesting is happening here now what would this result in this would result in two discrete um, vortex structures that would be shared one from the mid wing and one from the cascaded wing and note that this cascaded wing is very aerodynamically shaped and also um, has you know a multi-element setup which would allow you to shed the vortex quite discreetly but there are certain advantages that this setup gives them so let's dive into those advantages uh, a it's a two vortex system rotating in the same direction so what you can do is you can play with position so depending on the relative position of each other they would be able to position uh, the merged vortex either slightly inboard outboard up or down and this would be done by creating induced velocities of one vortex onto the other secondly because you've divided that vorticity into two vortex systems now it would be cleaner when they are shared and they would eventually merge down as we can see in this red arrow here the third point is consistency now because you've divided the vortex structures into two and maybe you reduce the sensitivity um, of conditions onto this vortex formation and maybe that again then allows you to have you know this mechanism to be more consistent throughout the entire range of ride height yaw etc the second big takeaway in this image is that it almost acts like a small barge board which has huge benefits in yaw especially when the tire wake starts uh, you know going inwards on the inside of the car if you take a corner additionally the winglet would land up creating additional pressurization uh, around the radiator inlet tip and uh, that is really important because this area lands up uh, seeing a lot of upwash that is coming from the front wing there can be attitudes of the car in which there can be separation on the radiator inlet lip so the pressurization created by this cascaded winglet would allow or would support uh, the flow around the inlet lip itself next up let us look at the flowage wing that mercedes have brought which is not very novel because i think it's been inspired from the red bull flowage but let us see how and what it's trying to do so to try and understand what the flowage wing is doing and how it's working we did a cfd simulation where we have a baseline case in which you have the normal flowage like that and then you have a flowage wing which is basically the winglet mounted on the floor which is some sort of a winglet as you can see here or more precisely as you can see in this figure here so this is your baseline and this is your floor edge wing right so what is the main aero mechanism at play here from what we can see is the tip across which the vortex gets shed itself changes so you have an early vortex shedding mechanism uh, what do i mean by this so imagine in the baseline that this is your tip uh, that is the floor edge uh, across which your vortex will be shed and basically will go inboards but in this case because of the winglet what you land up doing is you land up entraining the flow this way from bulk circulation and you land up entraining the flow from that is going along the chassis along the g-line uh, and that lands up creating a vortex across this shedding edge and this vortex is much more powerful as compared to the vorticity that is being shed off by the actual flow edge what that does is it lands up adding vorticity to the main um, vortex structure or the primary structure that is traveling uh, through the entire floor you can see what i really mean in 3d quite well you can see in the baseline this is your primary vortex this is the vortex coming from the floor edge and by the time they meet they're not really talking to each other quite well and this is because of the adverse pressure gradient um, that the diffuser brings in once the kick line is passed uh, while you can see in this particular case that is a flowage wing case you have your primary vortex and you have vorticity being shed in uh, from the edge that is from the here from here and because this vortex is much more inboard and you know 
sees the presence of the main vortex early on, they merge quite early. They almost merge, I would say, or for them to be really effective, they would have to merge before the diffuser kick line. And then that adds vorticity and energy into the main uh, primary vortex. And as that vortex then goes into the diffuser or sees the adverse pressure gradient from the diffuser, because you've added strength to that vortex, it would basically allow the flow to expand further and for the diffuser to work harder. When we put this, we got around 10 to 15 points of downforce on our baseline. So as I predicted, this is quite a strong mechanism uh, and it's not really creating outwash, which I initially thought uh, was the mechanism at play trying to create like a skirt kind of an effect, but rather it is more of a vortex dominated effect in which you're trying to add vorticity to your primary system. And then that creates a more powerful vortex and helps the vortex sustain itself as it goes into the adverse pressure gradient. And lastly, let us look at the small or the smart bits of vortex generators that are there on the W14B chassis and what they bring to the party. So the devices that I'm referring to is this downwashing winglet here and this outwashing vortex generator here. And as explained by Dr. Obbs on Twitter, the reason Mercedes is able to inculcate this uh, winglets into their design is because they are able to put it in their um, chassis mid volume, which basically has no regulations because they were designed to fit the chassis into it. Uh, however, uh, Mercedes have been able to make the chassis slimmer and that is how they have space for this canard and this floor winglet that exists. It is quite similar to the way that for example, Ferrari has been able to put their duct um, beside the chassis using a loophole in exactly this regulation volume. So in terms of what it's doing, it's quite straightforward. You're trying to downwash the air as much as possible to flow it across the G line. And this vortex generator, because it's outwashing, would end up creating a vortex that would basically generate outwash on the entire top floor. And then it would propagate itself around the floor edge um, which would then further aid extraction from the floor that would have an upstream effect in terms of changing the loading on the strakes and because of the loading on the strakes would change you would have a stronger vortex and thus you can make your floor work harder and yeah that was my perspective on some of the potential aero mechanisms at play on the w14b if you've liked this video give me a like and if you love content like this give me a subscribe see you on the floor in the next one